Nobody's going to take care of your business like you do. You get to screen and place your own tenants and you can save money if you do your own property management. These are all arguments for managing your own properties, but managing your own properties will slow down your ability to grow and scale your business. And who wants to take that call in the middle of their vacation to deal with a clogged toilet? In this video, I'll break down the pros and cons of hiring a property manager or managing the property yourself. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll give you a third option you may want to look at. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's talk about managing your own properties. If you don't live within 90 minutes of your property, I would strongly consider hiring a property manager. It's just too much time to travel back and forth for something as simple as showing the property to a new tenant. Here's some of the pros of managing your own property. The first thing is you're going to learn how everything works. You're going to have to learn how to write ads, screen tenants, manage your repair people coming in and out, and you're going to know all about the finances of the property. The second pro is you're also going to save yourself some money. Property management usually runs anywhere from six to 10% of the gross revenue that you bring in every single month. So if you're managing your own properties, you can pay yourself essentially that six to 10%, or you can take it as a savings. The third pro of managing your own properties is that you're going to be in charge of the success of your business. The first con of managing your own properties is you're going to be the first and only line of defense against your tenants. Doesn't matter how you represent yourself, whether you're representing yourself as the owner or the property manager, you are going to be the one dealing with all of the calls, all the emails, and no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to have to deal with those situations. The second con is it takes time. And as we all know, time is money. If all goes well, it will take you time to show the properties, collect the rent, pay the bills. If all doesn't go well, you'll have to deal with the evictions, tenant damage, and getting the property up and running again for future tenants. All of this is going to take time. If you're gonna manage your own properties, here are a few tips for you. Number one, learn all the rules and regulations. Each province or state has a set of guidelines and rules that the tenants and the landlords have to follow. And you have to know these rules inside and out because if you get a bad tenant in your property, I guarantee they will know all the rules and regulations. My second tip is pay yourself as a property manager. It's a write-off against the property and when you want to hire a property manager to manage those properties for you in the future, you're already used to paying out that 10%, so it's not gonna affect your cash flow. My third tip is to use reciprocity. Reciprocity is the idea of giving and taking. On the day that my tenants move into my properties, without fail, I leave them a card and a bottle of wine or a case of beer. And if they don't drink, well, I don't rent to them. I'm kidding. Giving your tenants a gift on the day they move in won't solve all your problems, but they will be more apt to do a few things for you should you need them too. My fourth tip on managing your own properties is to do the rent increases every year, especially in a province like Ontario, where you're limited to whatever the inflation guideline is. So for 2022, you can only increase the rent by 1.2%. Make sure you give yourself a reminder to send that notice 90 days in advance of a rent increase. My fifth tip is to never represent yourself as the owner. You're always the property manager. And if for some reason your tenants find out that you are the owner, that's okay. I don't like to lie to my tenants, but I just tell them that I'm one of the owners. And that way, if there's a decision that needs to be made, you can say, I need to check with the other owners. That way you leave that level of separation between you and your tenants. Okay, to the pros and cons of hiring a property manager. Number one, any good property management company should have systems in place already, such as accounting, tenant screening, and they should have relationships with local contractors. In some cases, property management companies may be able to get higher rents than what you may be able to get on the open market. They've got proven strategies when it comes to marketing and placing tenants in order to be able to get the highest rent possible. Pro number two is there's a level of separation between you and your tenants. There also may be increased liability protection because the property managers are acting on your behalf. And the third pro is that you can focus on what you do best. Choose what you do best as a real estate investor and let the pros do what they do. The cons of hiring a property management company is the cost and that they're always going to be acting in their best interest. Their best interest may align with yours, but if it ever comes head to head, they're going to choose their company's best interest over yours. 
If you're going to hire a property manager, here are a few tips for you. Number one, read that property management contract line by line. And if you don't want to do it, hire a lawyer to review it for you. That contract is going to stipulate everything that is included or excluded and can also indicate a la carte services that some property management companies will do. This could include collecting the rent, paying your mortgage and utility bills, and sending you the positive cash flow that's left over at the end of the month. Tip number two, when at all possible, try to get a rental guarantee built into your contract. Now, not all property managers do this, but if a tenant signs a 12 month lease and they leave early, the property manager is responsible for the lost revenue to you during the months that the property sits vacant. Tip number three is to make sure that they have a digital system of some sort, something that you can log into a portal and see what's going on from an accounting perspective, see where all your tenants are at with their leases, and you can do that all remotely from a web browser anytime you have an internet connection. As promised, I wanted to give you a third option when it comes to property management, and that is the hybrid option, which essentially combines managing the property yourself and hiring a property manager. One of the reasons I like this option is because you get to hire somebody locally and they can manage the day-to-day -day operations on the property and you can work remotely and still have control over your business. To learn about the pros and cons of the hybrid system and the tips and tricks of working in this system, check out this video right here. To learn more about how to manage your own properties and how to hire quality property managers, you can sign up for my level one and level two masterclass at darrenvoros.com. If you've got questions about property management or something else really Real estate related, leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Tuesday.